To achieve sort of the race walking technique, you're gonna have to have one foot on the ground at once with your, your toe pointing upwards. And then with your other foot, you're kind of pushing off the ground. So you're like one foot up, pushing off the ground, then moving into the next one. And the back foot will come into the front and land as a straight leg with your heel pointing upwards to achieve that straight leg. And then you'll be um, going back onto pushing off the back foot as well. So in race walking, you can get disqualified by um, breaking either two rules, which are losing contact with the ground or um, having a bent knee, which is the, the leg that's in contact with the ground. If that's not straight, then that'll be deemed as a report. Um, if you're close to breaking the rules, like a judges, because there's six judges around the athletics track or road, wherever you're racing, if you're close to breaking the rule but not quite breaking it, you'll be um, cautioned by a judge and that's not an official report so that's kind of like a thing that's telling you to correct your technique or you'll receive a report and then um, if you receive three reports you are disqualified. I've been disqualified this season I got disqualified twice um, one was at the end of the race which is only a 1500 meter race walk so it was a short race so they don't pull you out during the race in those ones um, I won the state championship, so I was pretty shattered. Um, my coach wasn't too happy either with the judges, as he thought I was within the rules, but um, it's to the judges' eye, so it's their decision. They have the final say. Um, yeah, I was pretty shattered. And then I had a sort of a senior competition race with, uh, against the older athletes, so not just my age. And um, I was in a medal position coming third against two world um, world race walkers from Australia, uh, Chris Erickson and Ridian Cowley, and uh, I was pulled out of the race by the chief official judge, and uh, yeah, that was a pretty, pretty shattering moment as well, as I was on set for a, quite a significant PB as well. As, oh, you're looking at over 200 kilometres per week, um, consisting of long walks, weight sessions, um, pool sessions like pool running and stuff like that, core strength. Um, there's really no, there's no upper body strength involved. You just have to keep that as light as possible and uh, yeah, just focus on your lower body strength and your core and your back strength. Yeah, lots of continuous training, fart leg training, long interval training, stuff like that. Shin splints, that's pretty, pretty common in race walkers. They'll have um, hamstring tightness as well. Um, yeah, shin splints, hamstring tightness, uh, that's pretty much it. You see people who don't do race walking, they do race walking for the first time, they'll get off the track and be like, oh, my shins. Um, yeah, that's, but that doesn't really, that the shin soreness goes once you keep training, but yeah, you do pick up niggling hamstring injuries and knee injuries, and yeah, it's pretty common in race walkers, I guess.